back here in my office today. This is my little workspace edit office and we got a package. Let's open it up. We were sent the mini intelligent nine egg incubator and we're gonna test it out. Looks like temperature in it, it's gonna be in Celsius, no big deal. It's got spots for eggs inside, it's got a little temperature gauge, and then it's got the sponge to fill with water, put here in the corner. It doesn't have an egg turner, so we've gotta manually turn eggs three or four times a day, it recommends. And this incubator, I think costs about $39 on Amazon. So let's turn this on, and then let's get some eggs. All right, we've got our incubators up and running, and we just got our hatching eggs in. Let's open these up. We got a bunch of these little eggs. You guys recognize this? These are some more button quail eggs. We're down to just a few of the button quail. They're pretty fragile and small. And we hatched some out, I don't know, three, four months ago. And we were wanting to get some different colors because we just had three that were the same color. So we ordered some more eggs. So let's hatch them out in this incubator. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Pretty cool, a couple more. All right, we've got all the eggs out here. We've actually got 15 of them. I'm gonna end up needing two incubators. And so that's why we got a second one. I've actually been running this one over here. So for these incubators, they've got nine slots where all these little lights are and they actually light up. So if you have an egg in there, that one's got something in it and that one does not. So you can see empty and something has developed but never hatched. And since we've got an extra incubator that I won't need when this is all done, stay tuned to the end. We'll do a giveaway and give one of these incubators away. All right, I'm gonna take you through my daily routine with what it takes to get these eggs to hatch in this incubator. So the first thing I need to do is set the temperature to the right temp. I've gotta crank it all the way up to get the heat right. So I turn the heat up all the way and then I keep another little device to be able to keep track of that. I need to fill this sponge with some water. We're gonna do that twice a day. And then we've got these little reservoirs here that we can put some water in. And they're a little too big to just pour cups of water, so I use this little syringe. The last thing I need to do is rotate these eggs. About three or four times a day, as many times as you can, maybe at least at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I need to rotate these eggs. The main purpose of that is to make sure that heat gets to all sides of the egg. But the coolest part about this incubator, there are some incubators that candle eggs, but I haven't seen any others that candle every single egg when you hit the light. So the next thing I wanna do is show you what it looks like when I turn all the lights off and you see one of these eggs develop over the course of 16 days. But it's day 16 and I didn't think these eggs were gonna hatch. We had one crack yesterday and I thought it was starting to hatch, but check this, that one cracked. But you can see with the light, I think there's nothing in there. That one's totally hollow. But then just now, I started hearing some peeping from this little button quail egg. I'll keep filming and see what happens.
are you building for me, Eli? A Lego brooder. So why can't we put these button quail out with the other button quail, the larger button quail? Because ah. I think it would pick on them. Yeah. So we need a small brooder in here so we can keep them warm and safe for the next couple weeks until they get big enough to go out with the, the bigger quail. Yeah, All right, what are you making? Who's making a worm? Worm house. A worm house. Why? What do we need a worm house for? I like it. Final results in one incubator we had one two three four five so in this incubator three eggs ended up hatching six of them did not in this incubator I actually thought it was doing worse but you can see that five eggs did not hatch and four did so this one ended up doing just slightly better now the pros and cons of using this incubator pro it was a ton of fun to watch this to be able to candle them with this light that just turns on with the push of a button. Pro, really easy to watch them hatch. There are a lot of cons. If this is an incubator that you're thinking about getting, you have to be very careful and precise when using it because you've got to fill this with water every day. This is a little sponge. There's four little spots where you can pour water and so I had to use a little syringe. Also heat was a big issue with this incubator because I had it on the max temperature. I think you could turn it up to 39 and a half or 40 degrees Celsius, but it usually sat at around 97 degrees. And so if you're needing to get something more precise than that or hotter than that, you're not gonna be able to get there. And the biggest con for me was that the water was accessible to the birds. And I actually had one of the quail hatched right here. The water reservoirs are right here and it actually put its head in there and I didn't realize it and it ended up drowning. Hadn't fully gotten out of the egg, I had watched it hatch and then I wanted to let it get out to dry off and I came back and checked on it a little bit later and it had drowned in the water. We want to show you what ended up hatching. We even brought the the bigger button quail in so we can show you a comparison on size. What do we have here? Maybe a white with some brown stripes. You're right, had his, some surgery on his hand earlier this week to work on his thumb. Can you hold up your button quail? And then your Eli, yours is the, the blondest one of all. What do you got there? Our yellow one. Yeah. Like troublemaker. So how are they doing in the Lego incubator? They're doing good. The boys Ooh. built that for them and we got a heater right here, food and water. So here's one that hatched about two days ago. Then here's one that's about five or six months old. So you can see how quickly they grow from so tiny, about the size of a quarter to uh, about the size of a baby chick. look deep into your eyes. Popcorn popping out of your hands. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. In fact, today I watched an aerial videography course by Wild Rabbit Productions about creative direction for drone filming. Many of you have seen us using a drone in our videos over the past few months, and I've been learning to improve my skills with it. Drew and Nathan show what it takes to be a professional aerial cinematographer, what kind of equipment they use, and even how to do certain techniques. In fact, the first thousand people to click the link in my description will get a free trial 
of Skillshare's premium membership. And after that, it's only about $10 a month. Here's our beautiful female. We'll put her back in. She's our only other female right now. Here's one of our males. We've got two males left. We had about seven or eight button quail when they initially hatched, but they're so fragile. Sometimes the males beat up on the females. Sometimes so they cool. just die of getting cold. We try to keep warm in here, but all right, that's why we're hoping to replenish our flock of quail. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And last thing, I'm giving away one of these incubators. If you are interested in this one, I will give one away. So leave us a comment, tell us that you want this incubator and tell us what you'd hatch with. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. We're not gonna pick based off of what you wanna hatch with it. In fact, I recommend really only hatching quail, pheasants, and chickens in here. I'm not even sure if it would last well enough to do ducks or turkeys, I'm not sure. But if you're interested in one of these, leave us a comment. In a couple days, we will draw a name and put a community post out to get the info of the winner that gets this. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.